I just got a, 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 a warning that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded and it said, and it is, and it is, everything is co -specific. Yeah. Everything is good. I, wow. Fantastic. I see all four of you in the place on YouTube where I was expecting to see you. If we have people watching, I can see them comment. I've never succeeded in getting this exactly in the right place. Unfortunately, what I'm seeing on my screen is a delay. So I'm really not enjoying watching it here. I am going to bring up um, Yeah, okay, there I'm in real time and I think I can just slide that over. Okay. I think I have success. Let me just check in with my husband. Barry, are you hearing everything? Delay. But you're hearing, you have sound, and you're hearing my voice. Fantastic. Okay. Hello, I'm Billy, and I have three fantastic knitters with me today who have all been knitting or have knitted in the past. The Genie Sweater by Susan Crawford. It's a fair aisle. We're going to show you in just a minute. But this is show and tell, and I often bring on guests from around the world Today, we're in conversation about our genies. For me, it's been over four months. And before I show you mine, I'm going to ask Courtney, do you have yours, Courtney, or you don't have it with you? Okay. The reason that Courtney is dressed, why don't you tell us, Courtney, and that'll explain why I have this going on. Uh, I'm just at work, and we had a work Halloween contest, which apparently I missed because I didn't. they did it before I got here. Because I start later. Um, so I'm dressed as uh, Rockford Peach, if you've seen the movie, A League of Their Own. Uh, I'm adorable. <gasps> oh, so cute. I, I'm, I'm trying to keep with the vintage theme. <laughs> it's adorable. And Courtney was reluctant to come and join us today because she was going to be wearing a costume for her office party. And I said, oh, come on, it would be so much fun. And I'll put on a hat and notice I tried to do some ghoulish makeup and lipstick to try and help her feel a little bit more comfortable. Before we start to talk about our sweaters, I just wanted to say, for me, Halloween has always been a really special holiday because when I was very young, my first memory of Halloween was my mother donning a witch's costume. She bought a big black hat. And at one of these like dramatic makeup places, she bought some gummy material that she could make a wart. She put a big wart on her nose and she dressed me like a little black cat. She painted a little black triangle on the tip of my nose and with her eyeliner, she painted whiskers. And I think she took a black stocking and stuffed it to make a tail for me. It's always been a favorite holiday for me because my mother was so enthusiastic about it. Not only did she dress me, but when I was a little bit older and we had two French poodles, she cut up a sheet and made them costumes. They were two little white ghosts. They just had cutouts for their eyes and I would take them trick or treating with me. So for anybody who celebrates Halloween, trick or treat, happy Halloween in a couple more days. So anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about our sweaters. Nancy, you have finished all the knitting at this point. Oh, this I was, I was, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping to have it all done. I'm, I'm just finishing up the uh, first arm sky and, uh, I, I didn't get it finished, but yeah, I've got the band on and uh, I, I've staked it and, you know, cut it and all that. Can you show us? Oh, uh, yes. It, uh, I got involved in other things and have slowed down. I'm not knit, knitting on it with the same, same fury that I was. I didn't. Yeah, I mentioned to you early on, I wasn't crazy about those buttons. And sure enough, toward the end, I discovered all you have to do is not do that final step, you know, where you uh, add several rows right at that 36 inches. I didn't, and it's fine. It looks great, just plain, like a plain 
uh, neck. Mine's not going to have buttons. It's okay. Oh, I'm, I will definitely, when I get there, do the buttons. So you're, you've already steeped. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Because Dawn and I are not I there think, yet. I think it's one of those things where, you know, we were anticipating it. It wasn't that big a deal, really. Uh, I did use uh, the fray check. I ran a, a, a line of fray check straight down the, the steep, the cut line. And I uh, backstitched with quilting thread, which is a great thing to use because it's got, I don't know what it's coated with wax. It doesn't feel waxy, but it's stiff. It's got a stiffener or something in it. It's, it's reinforced. It, the, just, it's the, not the sewing quilting thread. It's sewing thread that's been souped up with something. Mm -hmm. And it's a great thing to, to do that with because it's very strong. I don't think I could break quilting thread with my fingers. Uh, and, and I think that, 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 you know, she definitely states to backstitch it. And I think it's to stabilize those threads that are crossed over, you know, with, that are carried over to, with, with the, uh, Intarsia. Yeah. yeah and, I was wondering uh, about that as I would, you know, move across the eight. Yeah, I think I think that's exactly why we're supposed to backstitch is to stabilize those because really it's not that big a deal and and you don't really, you know, the the up and down stitches, the stockinettes really are not affected that much by by the cut. It's those backs, those carryover threads. I think what we're is what we're really reinforcing. Well, I'm not quite there. Let me grab mine to show you. I was hoping that I would be there by a day or two ago, but I ran into a snag. I should probably let Dawn talk about hers because I'm going to go on a long time. Dawn, show us your genie. Uh, I'm still knitting. I'm on 100, um, row 164, and the chart has 221 rows. So I haven't got that much more to do. And the rows are getting faster because uh, there are fewer stitches every time you knit. So I'll show you what I've done. Impressive. It's very impressive. So I'm, I'm a little bit like Nancy with the neckline. When you do that trapezoid shape at the front, perhaps Courtney could tell us when you fold it over, does it, doesn't it feel thick? Like no. you've got two thicknesses? Not really, no. I would think if it did feel thick there, that you could stick that and instead of having it be, I'm imagining it's gonna be like triple thickness. It the is. And the fold. Yeah. That you know, maybe you could stick and then just make it double thickness by tucking one on top of the other. But I'm not there yet. I'm not I, worrying about that yet. One of the reasons I chose not to do it is uh, I have scoliosis, and so I'm a little bit off center anyway. And I was worried that I'd be constantly and and it drapes so beautifully that it, I'm real pleased that I left it out because it looks great. I well, wish I'd had it long, far enough to put it on, but I didn't. I'm really hoping to get mine to actually be that trapezoid shape. Some of the ones I've seen on Ravelry, the people have more like a scoop neck. But Jeannie Jarmson's, it's a horizontal line, and then these lines come up, and it really is very geometric. It's not curved. It's like there's points in the corner. I really fancy that look the uh the bottom of the of the scoop is trapezoid it's it's got there's a definite corner on each side but uh, i'm real i'm real happy with mine real happy the other thing that i did in, in an attempt to make sure that mine has the shape that hers had is i didn't decrease as much I made a, a steeper decrease here. 
I think because I don't have a very wide neck. I think my neck is maybe like six or six and a quarter. And I was afraid if it was a little bit wide that it might just start to flare out. And I want it in tight. I also didn't decrease as much. No, sorry, I decreased more here because I was afraid that it would come down like this. Whereas most of the people, it's a little bit higher up. So I'll show you mine and then I'll tell you about my mishap. I'm almost done with knitting the body. I have three more rows. I'm on the last color scheme. I don't have to change colors anymore here. So I'm really happy about that. I thought I might be done today, but after this episode. So here I am. Um, I don't know if it's possible to tell from the steak how like the angle is. I don't think you can with me holding it in midair, but you certainly can see that it's wider here than at the top. So I came in quite a bit because I feel like I want it to be narrow here. I want it to be narrow here, but I need it wider at the bottom. So I started wide, but as I got up into this zone, I tried to taper everything. We'll see. I'll know in a few days probably, but I had a setback. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that setback. So I think I got overly zealous because I saw that I was nearing the end. So I started going faster and I forgot to change colors. <laughs> it probably wouldn't have mattered because there's so much going on. But let me see if I can show you another spot where I did forget to do something the correct way. Um, oh boy. Now, can I see it? Yeah, okay. Look at this stripe. I don't know if you'll be able to tell in this light. Right here, it's very pink. Uh, you probably can't see. And here it's a little greener, pistachio green. Yeah, it's maybe not so noticeable in this light, but in any event, it was my very, very final light color stripe, which is going to be up here where everyone is looking. They're not looking down here. They're all seeing up here. There wasn't going to be that green, the pistachio green at all, because I went ahead, ping, 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 ping for extra rows. And when I saw that, I was like, it's going to be noticed. I'm afraid it's going to be noticed because all the ones right near it are clearly very green. So if this was a heavier gauge, I would have just whipped out the needle and pulled back two rows. But with this, that's like about 250 stitches per round. I needed to drop back two rounds. I thought if I pull out and pull out two rounds worth, I'm not going to have an easy time picking up those 250 mm -hmm. stitches. They'll all start running down and I'm going to be in a pickle. So what did I do? One stitch at a time, I tinked back around one whole round, around another whole round. That was a day lost, <laughs> you know, because I'm doing other things during the day. But that was like my knitting time for that day. At the end of day two, I was back to where I was at the end of day one. Boy, was I annoyed. But as always with these things, when you make it right, you feel so much better. Oh, yeah. It's like always worth it. If it had been lowered down, like the one that I left. No biggie. I, no one's going to notice that in all this busyness. But where it was, where it happened, I just got too carried away. I got so excited that I was nearing the end. So Dawn, let that be a lesson to you. Once you start getting up into the 200 range and you can like smell the end, <laughs> don't let yourself get carried away with that. Just, you know, stay the course. Keep looking at the chart. Make sure you got the right colors. The color it's 
Sorry. It's very tempting. It's very tempting because <clears throat> it's taking us a long time to get here, and then you're nearing the end, and you think, "Oh, I'll just um, I'll speed up." But then it's very easy to make mistakes. On this particular pattern, it's easy to make mistakes. Be careful too. Sewing the uh, put the right sides together when you start sewing those shoulder seams because I didn't. I, I had about a dozen stitches I had to back up. The first seam went beautifully. And then the second I put, I left the wrong sides together. So my seam was going to be on the outside of the sweater. So I had to back that up. Which but she tells fine. you that clearly in the instructions. That's what I'm saying. Like, make sure you go back to the instructions. Uh-huh. I think Courtney warned us about this. Yeah, it yes. happened to me on the... Um on the initial decreases, I just got so excited and I just bulldozed right through the decreases and <laughs> just knit straight for the first, I think, two, like I had the entire strip of that after the first neck decrease, um, entire strip knit before I, I realized my mistake. This yeah. one. Uh -huh. So here's, here's my other tip. I should have, maybe I should have told you this trip tip earlier. When instead of um, doing the unknitting stitch by stitch by stitch, if you're brave, you take a very, very, very small needle, like, I don't know, double zero, and you weave it under each, like half of each stitch all around. And then you can pull your needle out and frog. Uh, make a lifeline. Yeah. Yeah. Make well, a life. I mean, but it's with needles. So then you're already on needles. So when you go back to your knitting, you're you've got all your stitches where they're supposed to be. Well, there's only one problem. This is the skinniest needle I have, a one. Mm -hmm. I don't uh -huh. have double zero. I'd love to have one. I could have put dental floss through, made a lifeline, and then ripped back to that and then sung them all on. But you know what? I did it and I thought, you know, don't think about it, just do it. And before you know it, it's behind you and then you continue on. Hey, it took so many months to get here. What's one more day <laughs> or one more hour? You know, you want it to be beautiful after all of this work. And it is work. <laughs> I think I'm going to have withdrawal when when I'm I've already got withdrawal. I'm, I'm sort of feeling down that it's, I think that's why I'm slacked off on the knitting is it's going to be over. Yeah. This is like a quarter of a year, a third of a year, a third mm -hmm. of a year, sorry, a third of a year. Um, and it's always been right beside my bed. It's the thing I reach for the moment mm -hmm. I wake up and before I go to sleep, it's, it's there. It's been like beside me, like a pet. <laughs> it's the same feeling when you graduate from college, you feel like, oh, it's over. But I do have my next project looming on the horizon. I haven't ordered my yarn for it yet. What are you going to do? Well, you know, I'm going to be doing this collaboration oh. with Roxanne Richardson. And I have already put together a little video clip of how I went about choosing my colors. So I'm not going to talk about that here. That'll be in another show and tell episode. Um, but that's probably coming pretty soon. I still feel like I want to finish this and I'm really, you know, I'm getting close now. So I don't really want to order my yarn until I'm ready to go. Cause you know how it is. Once the yarn arrives, it's like, you can't control yourself. You've got to cast mm -hmm. on. Like the minute you open the package, it's like, get me the needles. I got to see how this, how this knits up, or at least, you know, swatching. Anyway, Courtney, I'm probably going to be brave. I don't think I'm going to try and um, practice steaking on my swatch. I think I'm just going to do it. I have good size here. <laughs> I'm going to that hard. It's, it's not, not, it's, not, not as hard. it's not nearly as hard as I thought it would be. It's just no big deal. I'm going to take my chances because I'll do one sleeve and... Have you steeped before? Never. 
I, I would recommend you do it on your swatch then, especially because this isn't like woolly wool. I think it would be a good idea to do it on your swatch. I know you've told me that. I know I'm going to be that rotten child. I'm going to say Look at it this I'm way. You've, you. done it. you've been knitting on this thing for four months. It's not yeah, worth it. Right. You might be right. Maybe I should take your advice. I haven't figured out what scissors I'm going to use. I'm more nervous about that than anything because I have a limited number of scissors. I I'm use the, I just use my um, little tiny scissors that I always use. I thought I might do that. The scissors that I have in my little toolbox. Oh, mine are smaller than that. I'm not sure that they're sharp enough. I heard about using a piece of tin foil. If you cut tin foil with your scissor, it maybe sharpens it a little bit. Has anybody else heard that like helpful hint from Heloise kind of thing? No, I might try that. I'm just afraid like dull scissor would be really deadly. Yeah. That's why you put I, it. So much. Yeah. I also thought of maybe using cuticle scissors because they're tiny these stitches are tiny i thought i could do like you know one little stitch at a time with my little tiny cuticle scissors what do you think about that courtney i, I mean it sounds reasonable i mean these are little stitches and these, i mean my needles that sound or my scissors it sounds like are bigger than yours but they are you know, that's what i used but no they're not gigantic you know they're Yours are not so big. They just happen to be bigger than mine. Mine are about this big. They fit in an Altoids tin with room to spare. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't need big scissors. They just, they should be sharp. And I mean, even, even with little scissors, it doesn't take long to cut that sweater. Right. I'm imagining doing it one stitch at a time. Yeah very slowly so if i have like a little scissor little blade little snip i can't cut too much too deep by accident yeah make sure your hand is is in between the two layers of sweater when you cut it so that you don't snip through to the other side i can't also, the imagine i, I can't imagine that the instructions I say do to have my hand under it to see what I want to be like pulling the stitches apart even as I I, I wouldn't go. pull them apart. Don't don't pull because then that could ruin your knitting. Just just cut. Don't pull. I also think I might want to block a little bit before doing it to maybe even out the stitches. Uh, I I don't. I might have, I don't actually, I don't even think I remember. I might have, I might have blocked it. I think, I, I know I did before I started the ribbing. I had my sweater blocked before I did the armbands and the, um, the neckline, picking up the rib. Dawn stitches are very, very even, perhaps because of the way she knits, perhaps because of the yarn. It's I don't know if you can see my stitches, but they're, they're not particularly um, even. Yeah, the, the, the blocking will help that. And, and my genie was so crinkly and rumply um, before I blocked it. And it's, it's a like different sweater. And even between just having it blocked and like not wearing it, and then you put it on, that in and of itself makes the stitches look even more neat than it does when it's been blocked and it's just laying flat. And I guess that's so, the silk. So in my crystal ball, I look and I see blocking. Blocking before steaking, blocking before ribbing. And while it's blocking, you can practice your steaking on your swatch. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. I didn't, block, I didn't block mine and I cut my sticks at the soccer game out in a, I was sitting in a, a car at the soccer game. You're brave. Very brave. Uh, brave or foolish. Hey, you know what? You know what works for you. You're very experienced. 
You've been knitting. I, and I've, I've sewn since I was 11. I, I made my first dress at 11. So I maybe I'm feeling a little more confident. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. But it's your first steak, Nancy? Very first one. Very first. Well, this is what we live for in knitting. New experiences, doing things we've never done before, challenging ourselves, pushing the, the limits. So hooray. Yeah. Can I ask about the joining the um, shoulders together? That's a three needle bind off, isn't it? And Nancy, you were saying you have to put the right sides together to do that. Right. So that the seam will end up on the wrong side. And it's a beautiful seam. I'm so impressed. I'll never just, you know, well, it's just beautiful. Uh, so you, you put the garment inside out, then you do the yes, three needles. Yes, you put the right the sides together so you're working on the, in, the right, the, you know, inside. Yeah, be, just okay. be sure and do that. I believe that she says that in the instructions. Right. Yeah. But so you're knitting, you might you not read that together. because you're so excited that we're done knitting. Yeah, you knit two together. So you knit one from the front needle, one from the back needle, and then you do a regular bind off. So once you have two stitches, you pull it over. Knit from the front needle and the back needle, like knit two together, pull the stitch over. Does this make sense? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that because that's not a typical three needle bind off. There's a couple of really nice uh, videos on how to do three needle bind off. Really nice. It wouldn't hurt to look at. Yeah, but that sounds good. That sounds easier than what I was imagining. But I, after I'm done with the final row of knitting, I know that you're not binding everything off. I have to figure out which are the stitches. And I, I know that she describes that. So I will go back very carefully and read just what she's telling us to do. And ah, okay, so I think that we probably are gonna need to meet again, but because Dawn is way behind, I think that we should give her time. So I'm not even gonna talk about a date now. Dawn, when you feel that you're like you've steeped, and done the ribbing and you're ready to show, I think we could all come back. Unless you think that we should do something in between then, because you said that's like at least six weeks away for you, you estimate. I think it will take, realistically, I think it will take me six weeks. I've still got to finish the chart. Then you've got to uh, reinforce the steaks, cut the steaks, pick up all the stitches, do the ribbing. So for me, I think it's going to be six weeks, yeah. Listen, but I don't, want to hold, I don't want to hold you all up. Well, um, I think we're all gonna, like, Nancy's practically done and I will uh, keep going because I do want to finish, but I think it would be fun to meet one more time. Yeah, it Maybe would. We're all done or nearly done. So stay in touch with me and We'll figure out, you know, as it gets closer to that time. So Nancy will certainly be done. And I assume that I will also be completely done. And Courtney, you'll be willing to stay on call for us. Sure. <laughs> like yeah. one final wrap up. Okay. I think without, you know, doing it yet another time, and then we all come back and show our finished things. I think we probably should try and wrap up and then have one last hurrah with, Maybe we'll all come on wearing ours or something. So I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Good idea. So for that. Dawn, you stay in touch with me. If you feel like it's just not possible, then we'll. Well, I could, I, even if I don't finish, um, I'll wear what I've done. Let, let's put it that way. If I haven't quite finished the ribbing, I just, I could just wear without the ribbing if that's as far as I've got. I'll do my best, but. Uh, uh, I'll uh, wear yeah. <laughs> whatever. touch. We'll see how it's going. And then yeah. we'll revisit that. Okay. Well, thank you all for being here and happy Halloween. And um, <laughs> we'll for see you again. And I'm going to be back real soon with probably my next venture. I'm not contemplating another knit along until after my Harlequin with Roxanne Richardson. But I, 
I do have in mind another knit along. So it's a 1920s thing, a famous sweater. So stay tuned for that. And uh, I don't know when that's going to be, but maybe January 1st ish. So if people are looking for like a new year's project, this might be a good one to wait for. I've got, I've got two uh, Susan Crawford kits in the mail. Uh, (laughs) I love, I love her. Reminds me, I should tell you my joy. I ordered one of her samples sweaters. Oh, really? I I have a Christmas jumper coming. Oh, Uh, lovely. I I don't know if you know about her sample sale, but she has a sample sale right now and you can go online and look at the sizes and, and just get a ready-made finished sweater from one of her previous books. And the price was not bad. I saw that. Oh, good for you. I'm going to do a a beaded sweater. You're going to do the what? I'm going to do a beaded sweater, that yellow sweater with the uh, yoke that's got beads. I'm going to do that only with red and white, hopefully for uh, Valentine's. Okay. And what's your other kit? uh, The Rosa sweater. There's roses and brown. From the Shetland book. Yes. Yeah, that's a very pretty one, too. Oh, it's beautiful. So it's the one that's a twin set. There's a sweater and a no, it's from the uh, Shetland book. It's, it's a yellow it's and a, brown. It's a long sleeve. The but I, I know what twin set you're talking about, and that's beautiful too. I'd like yeah. to do that eventually. That but. was unfortunately not in my size because I was I was totally gonna buy those when the sample sale hit, but they were too big for me. Yeah. Which one did you get, Courtney? Which what's the name of it? Uh I think it's uh like the best Christmas jumper or it's a it's a Christmas jumper, the perfect Christmas jumper. That's what it is. It's red You'll and white. You have to show it next time we meet. Yeah, I will. It sh- she just shipped it today. I think I bought it two or three weeks ago, but she wanted to um, like steam it and give it a little extra clean, and so it just shipped. I think today or yesterday. Mine's going out that way too. I must be in the same shipment. We're keeping her busy. We're keeping. Yeah. Her- <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to just only knit her stuff. It's so nice. So nice. All right. Well, thank you again for being here. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.